um, anyone that wants to come along for that will be able to come and watch the film with us and, and uh, ask us questions after. Now, now you, you've, you've obviously made the transition over from Australia over here to the United States permanently and, you know, obviously working um, over the past four years, not only on your acting career, but your music career. I mean, um, how's it been for you to be over here to the States and uh, to be able to kind of open up, open up, to, um, open up uh, basically your, your career to, to the United States here in Hollywood? I mean, it's very exciting to be here. Um, I uh, was blessed to have some good opportunities in Australia and the UK prior to coming and choosing to um, to move to the United States and, and put down roots here. Um, you know, it's certainly been a challenge. It's basically like starting a career over again when you move countries. And uh, um, if I said that it was easy, I would be lying. Um, if I said I thought it was going to be easier, that would be true. Um, but it's a super challenging industry and, uh, you know, uh, it's an industry that I love and that I'm, I'm grateful that I get to work in, but it's, uh, it certainly hasn't been an easy journey to, to get to here today. Yeah. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about your music. I mean, um, have you had to be ability to perform out here in the United States before, before everything happened? Um, I mean, obviously you, you know, you came here and, and filmed the movie four years ago, but did you get any opportunities to be able to perform any of your music out here in the United States. Yeah, I, I was uh, I was doing some regular performing a few years back, um, and decided to put uh, a little bit more focus into the acting side of things for a while. Um, that seems to be having uh, I, I tend to have more leads in that world, um, and so just pursued that a little more heavily. Um, obviously, working more heavily on music again now it's really exciting to have the film out and to have the song in it so um yeah just excited to be jumping back into the the, the music scene a little more but uh yeah both both super challenging industries that i'm i'm so grateful to be a part of but um they are uh they're both full-time jobs and so doing both of them concurrently uh can be detrimental to the other so I try and do a little bit of a focus on one um, when I feel like it uh, it warrants that extra focus and, and jump back and forth between the two. Well, I mean, it's also nice to have that option. I mean, if if, if there's no acting jobs around, you can work on your music a little bit. Um, and then when those exactly. acting jobs come up, then, you know, you can you can skip off that for a little bit. Um, I know right now, I mean, Hollywood's, um, you know, probably not going to be starting up for the next month or so. Um, there's been kind of uh, rumblings that uh, things are going to be slowly opening up over the next month um, in terms of some of the studio stuff. But um, but obviously you've had the past couple months where you've kind of had a little bit of downtime. So have you been uh, have you been working on your music while you've been kind of waiting on uh, everything to open back up? I've been doing a little bit of work on the music and getting uh, stuff together ready for release. Um, I've also been. Uh, taking advantage of the time that I've been able to, you know, spend with my pets and um, getting more heavily into cooking and, you know, re doing sort of like semi-renovations on the apartment, nothing major, just like shuffling stuff and making improvements. So trying to get sort of a lot of stuff that's been on the to-do list or on, you know, the, the list of things I, I wish I had more time for done while we have this unique time in, in which to do that. Um, and I've also become uh, quite interested in spreadsheets, which sounds kind of strange, but um, they tickle a similar part of my brain that music does, and I've gotten quite good at um, creating spreadsheets. And so I've been doing quite a bit of learning on that front as well. Yeah, you know, I mean, um, I will, I will say that I, I have many other projects that I do, um, and in part of, part of the stuff that I've been doing while I've been sequestered has been um, also dealing with spreadsheets, basically doing stats. Uh, uh, so, um, so yeah, I've been, I've been working on 2019 uh, stats in terms of fighting. So it's been, yeah, I can understand that. You know, the idea of uh, working with a spreadsheet isn't, isn't isn't uh, new to me at all. I've been doing it for quite a few years. So um, I yeah. finally got an opportunity to use, uh, go, to, to catch up on some work, as it were, too. So, yeah. I mean, that's the no, advantage exactly. of doing I, it. You know, it's a, it's a strange time and it's a stressful time and it's important to take 
uh, that into consideration. You know, we can't just go um, 100% on ticking everything off your to-do list that you've wanted to do forever um, because it is a strange time and it, you know, that has its own toll on your mental health and etc. But it, it is lovely to have a good amount of time to focus in on some projects and, and do something a little different. I think it's, uh, I think it's a nice silver lining to take out of it. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, you know, I think that's a lot of us, a lot of times have these to-do lists and we, we get busy with something else, uh, you know, being our jobs or a relationship or something like that. And now that we have that, that, that time, I don't think there's an excuse anymore to not get to some, at least some of those things crossed out. So, I mean, that's what I've been yeah. doing and I mean, you say you've been doing that as well. So I hope a lot of people are trying to get a lot of things accomplished as well during this downtime. Um, you know, when you, when you started, uh, you know, we started the music, I mean, um, first of all, I mean, when did you start making music? Was that something that came out of the acting or was that something that you've always kind of wanted to pursue? No, I mean, I've always played music, uh, one instrument or another from quite a young age, uh, you know, starting with things like recorder and viola and, uh, a bunch of different instruments but clarinet for a number of years and then when I was uh, about 15, 16 I uh, started to teach myself how to play guitar and just fell in love with guitar started singing from there I had done some sort of musical theatre prior but you know was never really super big into singing um, and uh, then started writing music pretty much instantly so uh, guitar and singing overtook my life in a pretty big way from that you know that sort of mid-teens era through till I was 18 19 when I got my first acting job on Neighbours and then I was lucky that I got to do both while I was there um but it was you know it was a very full-time schedule doing both and then was able to tour in the UK and Australia um a number of times to to play my original music which was great um, a really, really amazing opportunity. Yeah, I mean, it's... Um, go ahead. But but yeah, like I've also always been acting, so it's hard to say which one really came first. Um, but I, I guess I was acting before I played guitar, but I've always been playing music. Yeah, I was going to say it's very familiar with one of your countrymen, uh, Rick Springfield, who uh, who who balanced both and had a very successful career in both, actually. I did get an opportunity to meet him quite a few years ago, and um, it's just amazing to see, you know, him having the ability to do both. So, you know, yeah. he's, he's kind of proof that it's possible to be able to balance both. So, you know, it's great totally. to be able to see that a person do that. Yeah. Well, hopefully I can be half as successful. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, how many guitars do you own? I actually only own three guitars. I say only. Um uh, a Gibson Hummingbird, which is my main uh, guitar, um, a Gibson Les Paul Studio uh, with a 60s neck, which is the electric guitar that rarely gets used anymore, and then I just have a nylon string guitar that sits by the couch in case that you know I want to do a little bit of noodling, but I don't want to be too loud. Um, any? Um, have you named any of them at all? No, I've never been into naming my instruments really yeah um, it seems nowadays that that's that doesn't seem to be very popular i've asked a lot of musicians that have been on the show and none of them seem to never none of them hardly ever seem to uh, give anybody names so uh yeah so you're not alone on that um yeah i mean you know with 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 your music i mean is it is it, it do you you know get ideas everywhere i know a lot of musicians say that they you know will sometimes have a notepad or or, or have their phone handy if they have a melody in their head or um, maybe a couple of lyrics and all that as well. So uh, is that, is that like you as well? You know, sometimes if you're on the set and you have an idea for a lyric or something like that, that you'll just go ahead and type it up on your phone and uh, keep it in, in there for a rainy day. 100%. Um, so voice memos is my greatest friend on the phone. Um, and I just have a shortcut in sort of the control center or whatever part of the phone that is called so that I can go straight to it and just start recording. Um, so that's generally more the sort of thing that I'll take a note of. 
Um, I'll email myself sometimes with like lyric ideas or some title ideas, but uh, a lot of what I find super valuable is those little bits of melodic inspiration. Yeah, and I know sometimes, you know, you kind of keep those things in, in your file back, and sometimes you could probably go back and look at some stuff that might not be ready yet, um, or, you know, there's some things that maybe you've you've written down earlier um, and then go back to as well. I mean, has that has that happened to you with any of the, the music that you've recorded? Do you kind of go back to an old idea and, you know, figure this is a time to kind of develop it? 100%. I, often it, I'll find that, you know, it's something that I started five years ago that just was, you know, maybe a short idea that I had and, you know, five minutes later I was onto something else. Um, I'll come back to that um, and I'll just happen to have come up with another melody around the same time that, you know, perfectly pairs together. So stuff, stuff like that happens regularly and um, it's, you know, the, the voice memos on my iPhone is one of the most useful songwriting tools that I have. Um, so yeah, definitely use it very regularly. Um, and I am sure that I've used it for every song that I have released at one point. Yeah. Now, um, you know, like you said, I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy time right now as well. And it's been like four years. So, um, anything, anything coming up for you, uh, in over the next couple months? Well, we'll see what happens over the next few months. You know, there's, uh, there's been a, a lot of protests where I am here in West Hollywood. Um, and uh, I'm so grateful for the opportunity to um, to protest, but it's such a strange time being at, in the midst of a global pandemic at the same time. So I have a feeling that we're going to be slowing down a little bit again here as cases increase. So I, I think I'm probably going to have to continue, you know, on the sense of the past I'm on currently, um, uh, releasing a couple of songs, Touch, which people can check out on YouTube now. I've just got a lyric video of that up there and that's going to be available on Spotify and everything soon. Um, and also uh, another new song, Wish You Were Here, and an acoustic demo of that song that you mentioned earlier, Out of Reach. Um, so in a similar way to the voice memos, you get to hear kind of the, uh, the first recorded version of that song. Well, I mean, that's, that's great to hear. And, um, you know, I want to mention that you guys can go to samclarkofficial.com. You guys can check out some of his music there as well. And some of the things that have been going on with him. And like I said, uh, the movie is currently out right now. Tell me, I love you. It's currently out on demand and DVD as well. And, um, I'm pretty sure you're out there on social media, aren't you, aren't you, Sam? Absolutely. Most places I am the Sam J. Clark. Yeah. L-A-R-K. And, yeah. And I mean, like I said, I mean, it, like I said, strange times. And I mean, I wish we could have, you know, uh, more concerts, but I guess that's going to drag on a little bit as well. Have you had the opportunity to come out here to Vegas at all? Uh, I've only been to Vegas once before. Um, definitely due for a visit at some point. What should I check out when I, when I go there next? Um, what do you, what do you, what are you looking, um, is there anything generally that you're looking at? Um, I can tell you well, right, I'm big, what? I'm not a big gambler, so, okay. you know, that, that removes a big part of it. Um, but I, you know, do like shows, so I'd probably go and check out some shows. Yeah, I mean, there's always a great shows coming out, out over here. I mean, everybody has their own little sit show, and like I said, we're kind of um, we're kind of like in stalemate here. We've got a couple of the casinos opening, but not, nothing. None of the shows are open yet. Um, but yeah. uh, hopefully, some of the the bigger performers are going to come out here. I mean, Errol Smith is out here um, uh, rotating between um, Lady Gaga and um, and Barry Manilow, and you know um, Cher. Um, uh, think here, um, you know, you know, pretty much whoever, you know, pretty much everybody kind of performs here. Uh, Fremontic Streaks, always great. They always have free music on there as well. Um, if you're not much into a gambling, it's still pretty cool to go up, up and down the, uh, Fremont Street and drink and check out some of the, uh, the hotels and restaurants. They've done a really great job at Fremont to, uh, really kind of update it. Um, a lot of the younger, younger crowd down here loves it. Um, so, I mean, I'd highly recommend, um, that, especially the container park, 
Um, the Container Park is um, right off of Spremont, which has these, like, you know, uh, shipping containers that are, like, restaurants.